Hi everybody, thanks for tuning into another video on TK's Tech Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at this retro games console by a company called Mayu, who made the Mayu Mini, an incredibly famous retro games console. This is the Mayu A30. Now you're probably thinking, where's the box? It's already got it out of the box. No, I haven't. Actually, this is how it comes packed. That immediately off the bat is a win for me before we do anything else. This thing comes in a case. This is how it came through. It was in some bubble wrap and a cardboard box, but the fact that you've got a case, a carry case, out of the box, or it is the box in this case, is a win because generally you want to carry these things around and you want to protect it while you're doing so. So they've got that right straight away. Um, this is the first Mayu I've had here. Um, hopefully there's going to be more. I really, really like the design on the case and the zip case, uh, zip here is a little looks like snares gamepad looks really really cool on the back nothing else and let's open this beauty up so we've got a bit of paperwork which we may or may not refer to during the video and we've got a usb a to c yep a to c charging cable there micro sd card just say 64 on there i'm guessing that's 64 gig card and this here is, oh, nice. We've got a C to 3.5 mil headphones jack. So if you want to plug in some headphones, you can do that too. Um, let's go and try and get this out. This here is a, I'd say this is a device that's competing with the RG28XX. Uh, so you've seen the video on the channel, if you're following the channel. If not, go ahead and look through, you'll find it there. It's one of the more recent ones. Um, they're both 2.8 inch devices. I won't spend too much time talking about that device because this is really going to be focused on this awesome gadget here um, and I may do another video to compare the two um, at a later date. So let's just look through this. Um, on the front we've got a 2.8 inch screen, um, it's a 640 by 480 resolution screen. We've got a really nice generously sized d-pad for a device that is so compact. ABXY buttons again um, really, very really nicely, generously sized buttons there. Start and select on the right hand side. Speaker and an analog stick, which we don't see on the 2800X, so 28XX. So I think this is probably more geared towards if you want to play. I think the benefit of this would be N64, for example, maybe some PS1 games, but N64 definitely um, would benefit from that anal single analog stick. Um, it's it's sitting quite far into the cover which means it's not going to get destroyed while it's in transport and it's definitely not going to get destroyed with that how comfortable that is only time will tell um but it's got a nintendo switch style cap on it as you can see there it's quite flat it's a convex design i do prefer concave um, analog sticks quite a grippy feel to it it's got a lot of texture on that so you're not going to be slipping around anyway um, i'm going to peel this cover off here quickly let's get that off there we go um that's got a nice screen on it on the bottom side we've got a tf card slot on the left and right uh, on the right hand side we've got a power button as you can see there we'll fire it up in a minute on the left nothing on the top we've got the l1 l2 r1 r2 buttons quite a nice layout there overall and again generously sized buttons Given the size of this device, they are very, very nice size buttons. They've not tried to make them too small. They've tried to make it functional. Volume rocker and a home button on the top there. And last, uh, lastly, we've got the USB-C port there on the top. And that may act as an OTG port. I'm not sure. Um, so let's... This has got 20, 2600 milliamp hour battery, 16 gig of flash storage, I believe. Um, so that's probably on board. I'm guessing if we screw this off where the battery compartment is going to be, there may be a card embedded in there. This is going to be for expansion, to put your own ROMs on, etc. We've got an all winner A33 CPU, uh, 512 mega RAM, if I didn't already say that, uh, versus the one gig on the uh, RG28XX. Um, so let's go fire this thing up. Really, really nice size. Uh, there's, I think, four colours of this device available. The the Famicom Retro Gold and Purple looks awesome. I'm going to hold the power button there. Right, We've got a blue light coming on. This thing, I believe, also has Wi-Fi built in. So it's got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi built in as well. Um, so maybe for things like downloading files, games, or even just OTA firmware updates. So there it is. It's on. 
Right, we're getting um, now. What is that theme music? Oh wow, is that one of the Nintendo consoles? Definitely. I think so. Um, right, where are we going to go to? Let's go to. Oh, so we've got, we've got game, which has got nothing in it. And we've got retro, which is again got nothing in it. So this thing comes completely blank. Now what I'll do is I'll pop this card in there. I say it's come blank, but it may be that there's some goodies on here. So let this slip this in. The card goes in which way? Can that probably only go in one way? Pins pointing down, I'm guessing, is the way we're going to go. And it's in. Right. So I've popped this in with the console on. That's PlayStation. I think that's PlayStation Vita or PSP menu sound I'm hearing one of them anyway this is still empty as you can see um, USB storage for our to select USB mass storage mode um, I don't know what's going to come up on there so it's got a retro watch I'm just trying to desperately find something to test out and um, I'll probably hit pause on this in a minute um, just so that I can actually find something right here's retro arch menu so this is where I'd probably go to start loading some cores. Um, let's go to N64 because we're straight up going to test N64. Okay, and let's go to um, explore. Nope. So, so what you're getting here is you're getting uh, an idea of exactly what you're going to go through when you get yours. Notice how I said when, not if, when. Right, uh, let's go to mount, SD card, ROMs, there is some stuff on here, um, N64, uh -huh. Super Mario 64, so let's see if that works, I've just uh, pressed A on it, the, the buttons feel really nice by the way, it's got a really really nice feedback on the buttons, um, that as you can see has done absolutely nothing, deadly squat, Again, I have no idea what I'm doing here at all. I'm um, just clicking around, trying to figure this thing out. Uh, let's see if we can find N64. Super Mario 64 says loading. And it's not loading. So we may be doing something very wrong here, obviously. Not user-friendly experience that I'm getting that I got with the um, Bionic RG28XX, but... This is coming down to user error more than anything else. I'm going to press the home button at the top to see what that does. It does absolutely nothing. So, RetroArch. Let's try this as well. Let's just see if this works. If not, I'll probably hit pause on this and just try and get this thing working. Um, I'll put some games on there as well, just so I can give it a test and we can see how it works. Um, I'm going to try and find N64. We well, don't see N64 at all. I'm missing, clearly I'm missing it. Neo Geo, let's just try something else. Let's just try um, Genesis maybe, Sonic. Just to see if something works. Yeah, it does, that's working. Sonic is working. <clears throat> so the buttons do feel very nice and responsive you can see that's working really really well as well very smooth the screen looks awesome viewing angle is also great I can view that all the way I never want to play like that but you can you can probably see that on the camera as well viewing angle is awesome working very nice right so let's try and get an n64 game on here because that's what i'm really interested in so i'm just going to pause this and we'll get n64 game running right so i've got some roms on here i copied some to the card um and one thing i did is if you're wondering what you have to do once you put some roms on there or why you can't see them you just tap the home button and you hit 
if you can see that there you hit refresh roms and it does a little refresh it will read any updates on the sd card it's probably cataloging the roms here at this stage um, and then once that's done um, you will be able to see the stuff you put on there in the list so if i just go to game um, and go to n64 for example i put on there super mario 64 i think the rom had, that was on it had a problem got mario kart on there so we'll try that out as well and donkey kong country we'll try that out as well so let's go to mario 64 um let's see how that goes should work now i'm gonna try and hold it up and play it so you can see it a bit better but I'll turn the volume down a bit it's a bit loud well, that seems to be working that's interesting the stick seems to have some sort of a drift on there it just seems to be going up well let's see what happens when we right let's see if that causes a problem when i try and play if it does not a problem we can sort that out anyway let's just get into the game first this all goes through it seems to be working really really well for a device with um 512 meg of ram i think we're going to get a fairly decent experience i don't see any chopping off sound or video at the moment it seems quite smooth seems to be getting a pretty decent frame rate i'm sure there's an option to bring the frame rate up on the screen given that it's probably running a retro arch anyway right so if Mario starts running off, then at least we know my... Yeah, so you can see there's a very slight strip, stick drift there now. It seems to have stopped. But when I move to the left again, it seems to be apparent that it is an issue again. So I'll try and get this replaced because that is probably going to cause some issues uh, when gaming. Right, but other than that, you can see it works really, really well good frame rate there seems to be working very nice so i'm not going to keep playing that because we know it's working already see if i can go back to start and select should help take them back to the game menu let's try out some maybe uh, donkey kong country another juicy game on the n64 really really uh, good game one of my favorites from that time donkey kong country fan anyway so if you haven't played them, I'd recommend you play all of them on something like this. Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, 3, and then 64. Really, really good series. That seems to also be working really, really well. Let's see if we can scroll this quickly. So again, you can see that seems to be working really, really well. We're not getting any stuttering of sound or anything else at all. Um, let's just see if we can get this started quickly and just do a quick walk around. <clears throat> Speaker's pretty decent as well. So you can see that there, it's running really, really well. My arms really admittedly are getting tired holding this thing up but I'll go as long as I can maybe we'll test out a bit of Mario Kart and then we'll call it a day um, I won't bother testing anything else on there because if it's playing N64 it's going to play SNES and everything else just fine um, getting a tiny bit warm so I can imagine this thing warm up a little bit playing juicy games like this slight stuttering in the sound there but the picture is not stuttering at all, which is interesting. That seems to be working really well. No, the sound's okay to be honest, it's not that bad at all. I think, if I remember correctly, it takes a bit of time before you can start doing anything on this game. It goes through this intro sequence, which you can't seem to quit.
Yeah. I just want to start running around a little bit so you can see what's going on. Shame that it's got an, uh, it's got a bit of stick drift already out the box, which is very annoying to be honest. But I can't seem to exit that. I think I don't want to drag this on too long. So what I'll do is it does look like it's working quite well, but let's just go into Mario Kart quickly as well. Um, I'm sure I just put Mario Kart on here. Mario Kart. That should be a bit easier to fire up. Great to get my N64 out and get these games on there and actually compare performance on this versus the actual console. I should dust mine off to be honest. One fifty CC that's gonna be fun, isn't it? Holding it up like this, playing one fifty CC Mario Kart. Uh, let's just be Mario. Oh, how much of my youth went on playing this game? I can't even say. So, seems to be working really, really well. Get the power slide going on there. That is working phenomenally well as you can see that there and I'm having a hard time playing it because I'm actually looking at the camera not the actual console um, but it does seem to be working extremely well so yes you can have a good gaming session with this on the go um, with your favorite N64 titles that you own um, but you want to carry them around with you this is going to be a great way of doing it now eighth so this is not a demonstration of how good or bad i am at mario kart this is merely just a demonstration of the fact that the console is more than capable of playing your favorite n64 titles and it's no doubt going to work with other stuff as well right so if i exit here i don't know what else is on there i've not gone through the games to be honest but you could put your own stuff on there and that's pretty much what you'll be doing i've shown you how to reset them might be some ps1 stuff on there i don't know if it's going to work or not Let's just try for the sake of it, Tekken 3. It's the game I've tested in some of my other videos as well. It does look like it's working, so we'll give it a really, really quick try. Um, and then we'll call it a date. So it does seem to be working well. And when I tested it on the RG28XX and uh, RG35 uh, Flip, whatever it was called, 35XX SP, that's the one. It worked extremely well. And not having an analog stick wasn't a problem on there. But again, for N64 games, it would be a problem. It seems to be working fine. I don't know why I selected law. I just did. Yep, seems to be working fine. The analog stick isn't working at this, um, it's a D-pad. Yeah, okay. And that would mean me going into settings. I can't, I'll be honest, I can't remember if Tekken even used the analog sticks on PS1. I don't think it did. So there you go, but it does seem to work really, really well though. Don't seem to be having any frame rate type issues there. Really, really capable little device. So we'll end it on that note. Um, so my ua30 impressive little console that comes with an awesome carry case so you can make sure this this is thing is ready to go in your bag out of the box because this is how it comes so if you've enjoyed the video please leave a thumbs up any questions please ask them in the comment section below um, and if you haven't already done so and you're enjoying the videos please hit that subscribe button to show support in the bottom right hand corner uh, thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video